So setting up how money creation impacts your economy in the long run, we're going to say that money creation will change anything that is measured in dollars. In this case, it would be nominal variables. So uh, nominal GDP, nominal interest rate, nominal wage, anything measured in dollars will be uh, affected by printing money. Think about it. If you printed enough money, you could make it so that every single price would have an extra zero on it. And um, that would be a nominal nominal price. So, you know, prices go up so much that, you know, something that used to be 10 now becomes 100. And you could change any price in the economy by just printing money or changing the money supply. We're setting up the idea, though, that the printing of money will not affect any of the real variables. And real variables in economics, we talked about this before, real GDP, actual production of goods and services, um, real interest rate, being able to grow your purchasing power, may, meaning you can buy more more stuff, physical items. We're setting it up so that printing money will not affect any of the real variables in your economy. So therefore, in the long run, printing money isn't a solution to trying to change the standard of living uh, of a country. Uh, it's not going to change the real production or unemployment rate, anything like that. So just so you can see this, here's your uh, nominal price, dollar prices. So CD, $15, pizza, $10. A relative price, which is going to be a real price, is in terms of a physical good or service. So another way of looking at the, at the price of a uh, pizza or CD is in terms of another good. So if you look at this, it's saying, okay, we take the $15 CD divided by the $10 pizza, and that's telling you that every CD that you have, what is the cost of it? You could have had 1.5 pizzas instead. So each CD costs you 1.5 pizzas. So this is a real price uh, and uh, it's in terms of a physical. So what does every CD technically cost? Well every CD costs one and a half pizzas. So what we'll see here is printing of money will change these uh, dollar prices. For example if you doubled money supply we'll see that what would happen to the CD price it would go from 15 to uh, 30 but the pizza would go from 10 to 20 and the relative price which is your real price would stay exactly the same and think about what's going to set relative prices relative prices are going to be set by the forces of supply and demand so we talked about that chapter 4 about how supply and demand changes uh, pricing in your economy well that's what it was changing it was changing the relative prices one other thing, going into real versus nominal wage, just thinking about this, um, your nominal wage is the money you get paid, so dollar amount, and then the real wage is actually what you can purchase with that, so in terms of a physical good or service. So let's say in this case it says $5 of, of output. This could be like a $5 shirt or something like that. So if you make $15 an hour, and the shirts are five dollars in your economy. Well, then your your um, real wage is three shirts an hour, uh, and that's what you work for, right? You work for actual goods and services. So you know you work for making X amount of food per hour, X amount of rent payment per hour. And one just thing, real quick, why printing money will not affect your real wages in your economy. Your w real wages are really determined by the forces of supply and demand. And like I said before, printing money doesn't change the forces of supply and demand. Think about it as well. Like if you have a skill set, you know, you know how to be an accountant. Well, they grow money supply, they shrink money supply. That doesn't change your skill set at all. You know, so in terms of what that should command wage-wise, like in terms of actual goods and services, that shouldn't change based off the fact that they print money. So what we'll see is printing money will not affect any of the real variables, and that's what we've been setting up so far for the chapter.